Bitcoin's Path to Method of Payment Like anything in a market economy, the price of Bitcoin is entirely dependent on supply and demand. This may seem strange since money is used to price everything else, but there is a supply and demand for money. A money that's abundant will tend to have less demand, and a money that's scarce will tend to have more demand. We call a money that's abundant easy money because it's easy to add to the supply. That's why it's abundant. We call a money that's scarce money hard money because it's hard to add to the supply. The main reason why people value Bitcoin is because it is hard money. There's an inborn instinct for humans to want scarce things, and Bitcoin is limited in its supply by the 21 million cap. That's lasted nine years already, and that makes Bitcoin scarcity much easier to trust than it did before. The people that value Bitcoin scarcity are using Bitcoin as a store of value. That is, they are foregoing goods now for goods later. They are saving. Furthermore, Bitcoin is also hard to confiscate and is unique among assets in this regard. There really aren't that many options that are provably scarce and are resistant to confiscation. Real estate stores value pretty well, but is easily confiscatable. Stocks and bonds are also good stores of value, but are also easily seized by governments. Bitcoin is really the only asset that has both proven scarcity and confiscation resistance. That's not to say that scarcity and store of value uses are the only reason that people want Bitcoin. There are people that want Bitcoin so they could buy something on darknet markets, or because they want to transfer some money to their relatives abroad. These are what I call method of payment use cases for Bitcoin. The method of payment use cases have one thing in common. The people involved want the convenience that Bitcoin provides them, but don't care to hold the Bitcoin itself. People that use Bitcoin as a method of payment are concerned not about price, but about slippage, fees, and volatility during the short window when they hold Bitcoin. For example, if someone wants to buy some drug on the darknet markets, they first go and buy Bitcoin with their native currency. Then they buy the product from the merchant, and the merchant then converts the Bitcoin to their native currency. Neither party holds Bitcoin for very long, and neither cares about the Bitcoin price as long as the total fees are reasonable. Bitcoin could be $100 or $100,000 for the method of payment use case. The price doesn't really matter. Convenience is what matters. This is why method of payment does not increase demand much for Bitcoin as the amount bought is sold soon after. For people that use Bitcoin as a store of value, price matters quite a bit. Talk to anyone who owns Bitcoin and likely price is something that they keep track of obsessively. This is evidence that most people currently don't use Bitcoin as a method of payment but as a store of value. So why is it that people value Bitcoin as a store of value much more than as a method of payment? Well, if you look at the payment landscape, the answer should be pretty clear. Consumers have many choices for method of payment. Cash, credit cards, debit cards, PayPal, Venmo, Square Cash, Google Wallet, Apple Pay, Samsung Pay, and even the good old-fashioned bank check are among the many choices in the U.S. for method of payment. Convenience is paramount in method of payment, and that means merchant acceptance. And merchants don't really want to accept Bitcoin. I mean, they do for sales purposes, but they don't really want to keep the Bitcoin. It's true that merchants can save at least a little bit versus a credit card, but that's more than made up by the fact that they have to pay the exchange fees to convert the Bitcoin to their preferred currency. At best, this causes selling pressure for Bitcoin, as there's more supply to be sold. Even if the spender of Bitcoin buys back that Bitcoin on the market, what they've actually done is use Bitcoin as a crappy credit card. There's multiple transactions, more conversion fees, and less consumer protections. In other words, it's much less convenient and inferior as a method of payment. Trying to artificially create method of payment demand is putting the cart before the horse. 
the vast majority of people that hold Bitcoin aren't looking to use it as a method of payment. Holding cash in a bank and using a credit card is much better for that. The people that value Bitcoin scarcity do so because they believe Bitcoin will go up long term. So spending it now doesn't really make much sense. The vast majority of merchants prefer something other than Bitcoin. Having received Bitcoin once or twice is not magically going to make them prefer it. So how will Bitcoin evolve into a method of payment, if ever? From a monetary evolution standpoint, a few conditions have to be met before people start using hard money as a method of payment in earnest. First, the merchant has to want that particular monetary medium as a store of value. Many, for marketing purposes, say that they like Bitcoin, but few truly want to keep it. You can tell they don't really want Bitcoin because they still accept other payment methods. Second, the consumer has to desire the good or service so much that they're willing to part with their precious Bitcoin. Savers have a low time preference and thus are very good at resisting sales tactics. The actual good or service must be truly worthwhile for holders to part with their money. In other words, the merchant has to want Bitcoin as a store of value and produce higher quality goods to entice Bitcoin holders. At this point, merchants aren't desperate enough for Bitcoin. They don't even want to keep it when they get it. Furthermore, Bitcoin holders aren't tempted by what merchants are selling and thus use fiat instead. Until this gap closes, there won't be much Bitcoin flowing from holders to merchants, which is another way of saying that there won't be much usage as a method of payment. Everyone in the Bitcoin community would like merchants to desire Bitcoin as a store of value. Increasing method of payment adoption, however, doesn't change their desires. At best, this results in selling pressure on Bitcoin, lowering price. At worst, this causes a misalignment of in incentives, misallocation of resources, and centralization. People value Bitcoin for its scarcity. Thus, everything else is a nice-to-have, not a must-have. Lots of options already exist for method of payment but very few for store value, and none that are as confiscation resistant as Bitcoin is. As Bitcoin adoption grows, merchants will start demanding Bitcoin as a store of value instead of any other currency. This is already happening to a degree in places like Turkey, Iran, and Venezuela. When a large part of society wants Bitcoin as a store of value, only then will the method of payment use case become more universal.